This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Chapter 20. What is Anarchism? Can you tell us briefly, your friend asks, what anarchism really is? I shall try. In the fewest words, anarchism teaches us that we can live in a society where there is no compulsion of any kind. A life without compulsion naturally means liberty. It means freedom. Freedom from being forced or coerced. A chance to lead a life that suits you best. You cannot lead such a life unless you do away with the institutions that curtail your liberty and interfere with your life. The conditions that compel you to act differently from the way that you would like to. What are those institutions and conditions? Let us see what we have to do away with in order to secure a free and harmonious life. Once we know what has to be abandoned and abolished, and what must take its place, we shall also find out a way to do it. What must be abolished, then, to a secure liberty? First of all, of course, the thing that invades you the most, that handicaps or prevents your free activity, the thing that interferes with your liberty and compels you to live differently from what you would be on your own choice. That thing is government. Take a good look at it, and you will see that government is the greatest invader. More than that, the worst criminal man has ever known of. It fills the world with violence, with fraud and deceit, with oppression and misery. As a great thinker once said, its breath is poison. It corrupts everything it touches. Yes, government means violence, and it is evil, you admit, but can we do without it? That is just what we want to talk over. Now, if I should ask you whether you need government, I'm sure you would answer that you don't, but it is for the others that it is needed. But if you should ask one of those others, he would reply as you do. He would say that he does not need it, but it is necessary for the others. Why does everyone think that he can be decent enough without the policeman, but the club is needed for the others? People would rob and murder each other if there was no government and no law, you say. If they really would, why would they? Would they do it just for the pleasure of it? Or because of certain reasons? Maybe if we examine their reasons, we discover the cure for them. Suppose you and I, and a score of others, had suffered shipwreck, and found ourselves on an island rich with fruit of every kind. Of course we get to work and gather the food. But suppose one of our number should declare that it all belongs to him, that no one shall have a single morsel unless he first pays tribute for it. We would be indignant, wouldn't we? We'd laugh at his pretensions. If he'd try to make trouble about it, we might throw him into the sea, and it would serve him right, would it not? Suppose further that we ourselves and our forefathers had cultivated the island and stocked it with everything we needed for life and comfort, and someone should arrive and claim it all as his. What would we say? We'd ignore him, wouldn't we? We might tell him that he could share with us and join us in our work, but suppose that he insists on his ownership, and that he produces a slip of paper that says he pr that proves everything belongs to him. We'd tell him he's crazy, and we'd go about our business. But should he have a government back him, he would appeal to it for the protection of his rights, and the government would send police and soldiers who would evict us and put the lawful owner in possession. That is the function of government. That is what the government exists for, and what it is doing all the time. Now, do you still think that without this thing called government, we would rob and murder each other? Is it not true that with government, we rob and murder? Because government does not secure us in our rightful possessions, but on the contrary, takes them away for the benefit of those who have no right to them, as we have seen in previous chapters. If you should wake up tomorrow morning and learn there is no government anymore, would your first thought be to rush out to the street and kill someone? No, you know that is nonsense. We speak of sane, normal men. The insane man who wants to kill does not first ask whether or not there is any government. Such men belong to the care of physicians. 
they should be placed in hospitals to be treated for their malady. The chances are that if you or Johnson should awaken to find that there is no government, that you would get busy arranging your life under the new conditions. It is very likely, of course, that if you should see people gorge themselves while you go hungry, you would demand a chance to eat, and you would be perfectly right in that. And so would everyone else, which means that people would not stand for anyone hogging all the good things of life. They would want to share in them. It further means that the poor would refuse to stay poor while others wallow in luxury. It means that the worker will decline to give up his product to the boss who claims to own the factory and everything that is made there. It means that the farmer will not permit thousands of his acres to lie idle while he hasn't enough soil to support himself and his family. It means that no one will be permitted to monopolize the land or the machinery of production. It means that private ownership of the sources of life will not be tolerated anymore. It will be considered the greatest crime for someone to own more than they can use in a dozen lifetimes while their neighbors have not enough bread for their children. It means that all men will share in the social wealth and all will help to produce that wealth. It means in short that for the first time in history, right justice and equality should triumph instead of law. You see, therefore, that doing away with government also signifies the abolition of monopoly and of personal ownership of the means of production and distribution. It follows that when government is abolished, wage slavery and capitalism must also go with it, because they cannot exist without the support and protection of government. Just as the man who claimed a monopoly on the island, of which I spoke before, could not put through his crazy claim without the help of government. Such a condition of things, where there would be liberty instead of government, would be anarchy, and where a quality of use would take the place of private ownership would be communism. It would be communist anarchism. Oh, communism, your friend exclaims, but you said you were not a Bolshevik. No, I am not a Bolshevik, because the Bolsheviki want a powerful government or state well, anarchism means doing away with the state or government altogether. But are not the Bolsheviki communists, you demand? Yes, the Bolsheviki are communists, but they want their dictatorship, their government, to compel people to live in communism. Anarchist communism, on the contrary, means voluntary communism. Communism from free choice. I see the difference. It would be fine, of course, your friend admits. But do you really think it is possible? This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.